Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Welcome to Chill Town Hoops. I'm your host, Jermaine. The youngsters call me OG. My friends call me J-Dub. Let's get to it. So, we have an Olympic team that's essentially a ragtag crew that was assembled on the fly. And it's showing. Because there's no organization, there's no continuity, there's no defined leader. We just got a bunch of really, we just got a bunch of great players. And we expect with having a bunch of great players that they'll just figure it out. Plus with a great coach in Popovich. They'll just figure it out. Well, it doesn't seem to be working. We got Dame who doesn't seem to know exactly what his role is. KD, he doesn't want to step on toes. Zach Levine is kind of in the wind. Devin Booker, Devin Booker looked like, I watched the game yesterday, and Devin Booker looked like he just got there. And I don't mean he just got there on the team. I mean, it looked like the game had started, the game was about to start, and like he just showed up like 20 minutes before the game was about to start. That's what he looked like. Drew Holiday is coming off of a NBA Finals where he's still sharp and his game has actually translated in travels but they don't look great they got out rebounded yesterday 40, 43 to 36 42 to 36 they got out rebounded they ended up shooting 30% on the three ball 0 for 9 in the fourth quarter on threes 0 for 9. That's not going to get it done. Evan Fournier. Um, I'm pretty sure you remember who Evan Fournier is. He used to play for the Orlando Magic. He now plays for the Boston Celtics. He outscored KD, Devin Booker, and Dame. 28 to 25. Now, those words do not go in the same sentence. Evan Fournier outscores Kevin Durant, Damian Lillard, and Devin Booker. You probably will never hear that again. But that's absolutely what happened. So why is that? What what happened yesterday with this French national team that didn't happen with the Americans? Well, we cannot overstate how important consistency is. Well, this French national team, they were the same French national team that was the tw that was on the 2019 FIBA World Championship team. With Rudy Gobert, Evan Fournier, Nicholas Batum, and Dakota. So they were they, they've been together. None of these guys have played together. In fact, the 2019 FIBA FIBA World Champ FIBA World Championship roster, none of those guys are on this are on this roster. It's a completely different roster. And this is what I mean when I say throwing ragtag crews together. When you look at the 2006 or the 2004 Olympic team. And then you look at the 2006 World Championship FIBA team. They ended up winning the bronze. And then you look at the 2008 Olympic team. And then you look at the 2012 Olympic team. There is some consistency there. And how do I know that? Well, the 2004 Olympic team had James, Bosch, Dwayne Wade, and Carmelo Anthony. The 2006 team. All four of those guys again. The 2018 Olympic team. All four of those guys again. They ended up winning the gold medal. The 2012 team. Here we go again. So there was, there was a level of consistency with these guys. When they were building it. And just because you have a great collection of talent. It doesn't translate. When you don't have leadership. We don't have a guy or guys on this team that are doing the dirty work? Who's diving on the floor for loose balls? Where is the self-pride? You're not scoring on me again. I'm going to get this loose ball. I'm going to get this rebound. Bam looks like the only guy that's actually attempting to play defense. It's not until they fall deep in a hole where they realize, well, we're behind now, so we better do something. And they, they, they seem to look panicked when that happens. 
And by then, it's too late. So they play Iran. And this, this matchup, they should do well against Iran. But there has to be a level of continuity with this group, and it's not there. So it's not surprising that they've been losing. It is, and I wouldn't be surprised if they did not win the gold medal. In fact, I'd be more surprised if they won the gold medal. Just by the way they've been playing and what I've seen. I'd be more surprised if they ended up winning the gold medal. Because this group looks like a ragtag group. You know, nobody, there isn't anybody who's defined as, as the defender. I mean, Drew Holiday just got there. Literally. Today is Monday morning. They played yesterday. He just got there on, I think, Friday. Literally, he just got there. Bam is the only other guy who defends and rebounds. They found JaVale McGee. Keldon Johnson plays for the Spurs. He's on the crew because Bradley Beal was in COVID protocol. If we actually had a national team where we had a bunch of young guys like they did in 2004 with James, Anthony, Bosch, and Dwayne Wade, and we're going to get a commitment from these guys for the next four, six, eight years, then we can actually build something and build around those guys, just like you do with an NBA team. Exactly like you do with an NBA team, only except we don't have that. We had those guys, so now they're gone. Now Wade's gone. Now Anthony's gone. Now James is gone. So what we expect is we expect to be able to just throw a bunch of ragtag guys, <clears throat> a bunch of ragtag groups together, <coughs> And expect to win. Excuse me. And it's not going to work. You know, okay, we got Kevin Durant. So he could just score 40. So that's enough. We got Damian Lillard. He scored 60 a bunch of times in games. So that's enough. No, that's not enough. That's not enough. And it's and until we get some continuity, and until we get some guys with some self-pride who are going to play defense, who are going to do the dirty work, this is what, this when you get against the better teams, like Italy, like Argentina, Spain, this is the result you're going to see because those guys have been together forever. And since we're on the subject of building teams, I make this transition into the NBA draft and I, you know, the draft is coming up on Thursday. I saw a couple of guys that I am very interested in. I dig Cade Cunningham, man. You know, he's got great vision. I think he can be an elite defender. He's an exceptional one-on-one -on -one player. He's, he, he's, he's, he's so good at getting to the basket and breaking down his man at six foot eight. And he's a great athlete on top of that. I love everything about his game. And he looks like a guy that you could possibly build it around. But with this draft, I'm thinking... You got guys who could either, you got a bunch of guys who could either be great or we might find in this draft number seven or number eight who ends up being an all-time great and we weren't even talking about them. That's what kind of draft this is. We got a, I think we got a good collection of draft, a good collection of young guys, but we may very well find out in this draft we might have a guy who is the number eight pick or the number 12 pick who turns out to be an all-time great, and we didn't even know it. You know, I love Suggs. You know, he shoots the long ball. He's got great vision. His ability to finish around the rim in traffic. His ability to pass. You know, you need that when you're building a unit. You absolutely need that when you're building a unit. You know he's he, he stays patient with the ball. He doesn't he does I, he I, I don't really see him rushing. But the guy who I think in this dra in this particular draft with Suggs and Cunningham and Jalen Green, who's an incredible athlete, super duper athlete, you know, exceptional one on one player. But the one guy that I see in this draft that there's going to be a lot of teams that are going to regret passing on him is Davion Mitchell. Davion Mitchell. I think is going to be. I think he's going to be great. No question in my mind. I think he's going to be great. He's a lockdown defender. I think he's a really good playmaker and passer. 
yeah, he might be a little undersized for, for you at six foot two, but Damian Lillard ain't exactly six six neither. So he's really smart. And he's great in traffic too. And that's huge when you got a point guard that's like that because you can build around him. So I think uh, as of right now, I, I'm hearing him at around 13, anywhere between 7 to 13. And I can tell you right now, the teams that pass on him, they're going to regret it. No question about it. I, I believe that they're going to regret it. Um, I think Moody also from Arkansas, from Arkansas, I think the teams that pass on him, they're going to regret it too. I love it. I, I love everything about his game. It's easy for the first four, five, six guys. But when you get into the later part of the lottery and then you get into the later part of the first round, those are the gems. I'm not really high on Jalen Johnson. So I'm... I, 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 I think he the, the kid from Duke, I, I think he's a little soft. So I'm not really high on him. I'll be interested to see what type of pro he is, but he's definitely a wait and see for me. So um, so that's what's going on with the Olympic team. That's what's going on with the draft for right now. We'll get back together really soon. It's great to see you guys, and I'll talk to you soon.